All right, we have one more thing to talk about about plants. The angiosperms are divided into two groups, the monocots and the dicots. This is based on the number of cotyledons they have. Cotyledons are seed leaves produced by the embryo. These structures serve to absorb nutrients packaged in the seed and help the seed to survive until it's able to produce its first true leaves and therefore begin photosynthesis. Again, monocots have one cotyledon and dicots have two. There are also other important differences between these two groups of angiosperms. First, monocots have flower parts like stamen and uh, petals in multiples of three. Dicots have floral parts in multiples of either four or five. Dicot leaves usually have a net-like arrangement of leaf veins, whereas the monocot leaves have a parallel vein structure. Also, in the stems, Dicots have their vascular bundles arranged in uh, geometrical rings, whereas monocot vascular bundles are distributed throughout the tissue in no apparent pattern. Other differences include the root structure. Dicots have what's called a tap root system, whereas monocots have a more spread out, smaller system known as fibrous roots. Fewer than 10% of all monocot plants have wood whereas about 50% of dicots are woody. Common examples of monocot plants are corn, most grasses, tulips, orchids, and bananas. Common examples of dicot plants include maple trees, oak trees, roses, cotton plants, apple trees, tomatoes, dandelions, and many other of the most common plants familiar to us. Now let's talk about cells. Today on Earth, there are two basic types of cells, prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Prokaryotic cells are thought to be the most simple type of cells on Earth today. These cells have no membrane-bound nucleus and no membrane-bound organelles. They're simple cells. The only examples of organisms with prokaryotic cells on Earth today are bacteria. Eukaryotic cells are more complicated. These cells have a membrane-enclosed nucleus they also have many membrane-bound organelles. Eukaryotic cells are found in all organisms except bacteria. This includes animals, plants, fungus, and protists. The importance of membrane-bound organelles is that this allows certain parts of the cell to become specialized and therefore to divide the labor and to become more efficient. Next, let's talk about the parts of the cell. The nucleus of a eukaryotic cell contains the cell's DNA. It's thus able to control and direct the activities of the cell. The cell or plasma membrane is a selectively permeable structure which helps to control the substances that enter and exit the cell and thus helps the cell to maintain homeostasis. The mitochondria are sometimes referred to as the powerhouses of the cell. These structures carry out cellular respiration and make the needed ATP for the cell. The ribosomes are important in that they control protein synthesis. Proteins make up most of your muscle, a good portion of your bones and skin, and also your connective tissues, and are also very important in the structure of enzymes. The endoplasmic reticulum acts like a highway through your cell. The rough ER is covered with ribosomes and then transports the proteins made by these ribosomes throughout the cell. As the proteins are being transported, the ER also helps to modify them. The Golgi apparatus is important in the process of exocytosis. This is the movement of substances out of the cell and to other parts of the body. The lysosomes are sometimes referred to as the recycling centers of the cell. These structures contain powerful hydrolytic enzymes which break down dead cells or food, the parts of which are then reused for other purposes. Plant cells have chloroplasts. These are the locations of photosynthesis. Most cells also have vacuoles. Vacuoles can be thought of as the storage containers of the cell. They may store food, water, waste, or other important materials. The cell is often compared to a factory. The nucleus of the cell is compared to the foreman of the factory in that both control and direct the activities of their respective structures. The cell membrane or plasma membrane is often compared to the entrances and exits of the factory in that both control the substances that enter and exit. The mitochondria is compared to the boiler room or the electrical input supply for the factory. 
because the mitochondria makes energy and ATP for the cell. The ribosomes are compared to the actual factory machinery that builds the products of the factory, like the, the machines that build cars or TVs, because the products of the cell are proteins. Ribosomes are the structures that do protein synthesis. The endoplasmic reticulum is often referred to as the conveyor belt of the cell in that the ER's main role is to move substances throughout the cell and as those substances are moved across the ER they're changed and modified. The Golgi apparatus is referred to as the UPS or the FedEx of the cell in that it's the job of the Golgi apparatus to ship substances out of the cell. The lysosomes are referred to as the recycling centers of the cell because they break down old cells and also food and the parts are reused for other purposes. The chloroplast are often referred to as the solar panels of the cell in that both take light energy and convert it into other types of energy. And finally, the vacuoles are referred to as the boxes or shipping containers for the cell in that vacuoles store and also help to ship substances from one cell to another. Now let's discuss the similarities and differences between plant and animal cells. Both types of cells are eukaryotic, which means they both have membrane-bound nuclei and membrane-bound organelles such as mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum, etc. Both types of cells also have similar cell membranes. Now let's discuss the differences. The most obvious difference is that plant cells have a cell wall outside the cell membrane. Animal cells lack such a cell wall. Plant cells also have a large central vacuole which helps to store water, minerals, and other things for the plant. Animal cells have vacuoles but they're not nearly as large. Another difference is that plant cells have chloroplast and are therefore able to do photosynthesis. Plant cells are said to be autotrophic. Animal cells lack chloroplast and therefore cannot do photosynthesis and are often referred to as heterotrophic. One other difference is that, is that animal cells have an organelle called the centriole. This structure functions to help uh, form the spindle fibers that are needed during mitosis. Plant cells carry out mitosis also, but lack centrioles.